Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Air. I feel like we are getting very close to the end of Minagi's bad route, so let's just continue forward. Dawn broke without me catching a wink of sleep. I had been thinking about the end of the dream, about Tono Minagi. No, that answer was already apparent. I was thinking about the short period of time I had spent in this town. After I thought back upon that, my next course of action became clear to me, all the more so, when I recalled the other smiling face that I had met at the station, all the more so I couldn't move on. Is that really her wish? Is that really what she desired? Besides that, I wanted to ascertain what her happiness was, the happiness of that girl who Tono had always watched over. The dream is soon coming to an end. The girl, or the girl that said that, has it already ended? Or is it still going on? A gloomy atmosphere. In contrast, the sky was a true shade of blue. Tono came out from the station building. The skirt of her school uniform was wavering. She stood beside me in a relaxed manner. Her hair was still a bit wet. It was the nice scent of shampoo. Did you take a shower? She nodded. Because my hair was in a mess. A mess? Yes, a big mess. It was quite obvious that Tona was pretending to be collected. Yet underneath her puffy eyelids, her sadness was showing. She thought she was hiding it, but she couldn't. Why are you in your uniform? There's still summer school. I see. She still planned to go to school at a time like this. I thought that was just like her. Tono always kept to her own schedule. She did what she had always been doing without fail, almost as if... Almost as if she were trying to ascertain whether she belonged here or not. See you later. You're leaving already? Yes, I'm running late. She bowed politely, then turned away. Tono! I called out to her. Yes? Around what time does your class end? In the afternoon. Afternoon, huh? Will you wait for me? What do you mean? I'll come to pick you up, so wait for me. Okay. Tono looked at me and nodded. But I may be late. It's okay. She shook her head. I'm totally fine with that. Really? Yes. Totally fine. Sorry about that. It's okay. But, come as soon as possible. Sure, I will. Okay. She bowed once again, then left. I watched her until she disappeared from sight. Then I leaned against the wall. Now what? The wind was blowing. My hair and clothes fluttered. Has she hopped on this... Er, eh. Has she hopped onto this wind and flown somewhere else already? That wasn't possible. I could still make it. That girl's wish. That girl's happiness. I wanted to ascertain them. Perhaps I didn't need to do so in the first place. Perhaps I was merely following through what I had just decided to do. But I wanted to do it. I had to do it. Because ever since a long, long time ago, she had supported Tono with that little body. That was why I had to meet her for the last time. It might be that there was only one answer. I still wanted to hear it from her. The courage to move on. That wasn't it. I just needed to give her a little push on the back. If I didn't do that, I'd definitely regret it. I waited. The dream wasn't over yet. I believe that was so. Right? Michiru? The sun rose. It moved over, or it moved right overhead. Then it set into the west. The air became still. School was ending. It was a bit past noon. How much time had passed after that? I was still here looking up at the sky. I came too early, so I waited. For hours. With faith in my heart. The tree's shadows grew longer. The sunlight turned orange. The dusk was starting to take shape. We were reunited. We gazed at the setting sun. It was a bright crimson. It was huge. It looked ready to sink and disappear any minute now. 
That was what the sunset looked like. You're late. I looked away from the orange sunset and immediately said that to the girl beside me. Mm, I'm sorry. She was sitting on the bench. I heard her apologetic voice. What were you doing all this time? Her doleful eyes darted back and forth, then finally settled on the sky. Actually, I should already have returned by now. Returned? Yep, that's right. I see. A place where Michiru had to return to. I didn't know where that was. However, I could feel that it was a sad place. The dream should have been over. But I'm a selfish girl. I asked for more time. Then she laughed with her usual nyahaha. It was a desolate laughter. You're lying. I spat out. You didn't ask for more time, did you? You're living on borrowed time. Hmm. Michiru lost her tongue for a few seconds. So you already knew. Her voice was so soft, it almost wasn't there. Her pitiful voice made my heart ache. This girl, who would, re who would soon return to that sad place, she entrusted me with her last wish. Yet I... I'm sorry. I clenched... I clenched my... Er, I clenched my clasped hands between my knees tightly. You entrusted me with your wish. I made a promise to you. It's fine. She shook her head. Michiru chided me for blaming myself. You don't have to apologize. It's not your fault. Of course, it's not Minagi's fault either. Michiru. Minagi's waiting for you, right? You knew? Of course I do, because I was always with her. I see, that's true. Yep, so please, go to her. Minagi's feeling lonely. Can I ask you for one more thing? Wake her up from the dream, Kunasaki Yukito. But, are you fine with that? Your wish, your happiness. It's alright. I'm out of time. The dream is ending. But, Michiru... This way you'll... If I do... Or if I don't do it now, Minagi will never be able to go anywhere. So that's why you... Are you really fine with that? I... I'm okay. I don't want to see Minagi when she's lonely. She's most beautiful when she's smiling. So please, go to her. Minagi is waiting for you. Michiru. The evening calm ended. The cold wind of the night had picked up. I slowly turned to look at the bench beside me. She wasn't there. That girl who earnestly wished for the happiness of her best friend was no longer here. She just was no longer here. Only something remained, bathed in the glow of the setting sun. A small bottle was rolling around on the bench. When I picked it up, it or the star sand shook. How very warm. It felt like somebody, or it felt like someone had just been holding it a second ago. Michiru's wish. Michiru's happiness. All, or are those all Tono's happiness? The memories of the days we had spent together. Was that all there is to her happiness? I couldn't verify that anymore, because the dream had ended. Star sand. The happiness Michiru sought. It looked wet. A teardrop fell from the bottle and bounced off. The sun set into the distance, or into the mountains. <laughs> the clouds formed a blanket above, as if they were a mirror to emotions, as if they were raining tears. A light drizzle began. The splashing mud dirtied my pants. The rain pelted harder, as if signaling the extent of the sorrow. I ran toward where Tono was, ignoring the wetness on my hair and shoulders. In my hand was the star, or the star sand. That was Michiru's wish. I ran to meet Tono. I opened the door to the rooftop. Huge drops of water, or water fell from the eaves of the roof. A light cold wind was blowing. The rain had stopped. The stars had come out. So there you are, I called out to the girl by the fence. I'm sorry. Tono turned around and smiled. She was drenched from the rain, just like me. Droplets of water fell from the ends of her hair. Did you have a hard time finding me? No. I knew immediately where you were. 
Oh, I see. Yeah, I thought you'd probably be here. Are you done with club activities? Yes. The club activities are at night. But the stars weren't out to or till just now. That's true. It was raining just now. So, the stars weren't out. You can't do your club activities like that. Yes, I lied. But I did plan to do it or to do club activities, but I couldn't. I wanted to see the stars, but I kept looking at the ground. I can see plenty of things from here. Well, what can you see? The school gate? Were you waiting for me? Yes. I had been waiting forever. I was wondering when you'd come. I thought that you would never come. Minagi's eyes were moist. The tears gathered at the edge of her eyes, then finally streamed down her cheeks. Tono turned her back to me and rubbed her eyes with the back of her hand. She started crying. Her shoulders were shaking. She wiped away her tears again and again, but her tears wouldn't stop. They caressed her cheeks continually. Tono choked on her tears under the stars. I walked over to her, the puddles splashed around my feet. I put my hand into my pocket. And then I searched for the bottle of star sand. I met her, I said to her. When I retrieved the star sand from my pocket, it made a gritty sound. I reached out and put the bottle in front of her over her shoulder. Michiru. Oh. And then, Tona was dumbstruck. She reached out, her slender fingers trembling. She touched my hand. Her fingers were slightly wet. The transparent bottle became covered in droplets. She took it in her hand. She stared longingly at it. Then she hugged it gently. Her shoulders trembled again. And she was crying again. Michiru... Did Michiru say anything? She had stopped wiping her tears. Tono tightly embraced the little bottle. She wants you to wake up from the dream. That was what she said. From... my dream? That's right. The long dream is over. Just a bit ago. Tono's shoulders jerked. She held the bottle even tighter. Tono curled up around herself. She looked even smaller like that. Tono's dream was already over. That girl, Michiru, had returned to her original place. She only wished for Tono's happiness. She said that was also her happiness. You have to return to reality. No, you should have been back by now. To the place where you belong. Even if it hurts, even if it makes you sad. You should have returned to where you ought to be. Yes. But, at that time, you... Even with her mother right in front of her. Even if she knew that was Michiru's wish. Even if she heard me calling her name. Even when I held her back. You couldn't take that first step. Yes. Tono's body trembled as she stood on the wet concrete ground. Her uniform was stuck to her skin. Her long hair was drenched from the rain. They dripped water like tears. The light from the town could be seen beyond the fence. The twinkling stars floated in the distant sky. I... Tono spoke as if sighing. I'm deplorable. Yeah, that's right. You're deplorable. Yes. You're deplorable and weak. Yes. The mesh fence rattled. Her slender fingers were holding on to it. As she lowered her head, her tears fell and made ripples on the or on the puddle at her feet. I can't even wake up from my own dream. Yeah. I can't fulfill Michiru's wish. You couldn't even see her off for the last time. That's right. You didn't want to see her, did you? I didn't want to. You were afraid to face the sadness, right? She grasped, or she grasped the mesh fence even tighter. The wires bit deep into Tono's pale hands. I was so afraid. I was afraid to face the end of my dream. I was afraid to face my mom. You couldn't do it after all. Exactly. I... 
I couldn't do it after all. Her wet hair slid off the uh, slid off the end of her shoulders. The green iron wires had left bright red tracks on her hands. I don't even know where I should return to anymore. That's right. I don't even know how to find it. I didn't even try to find it. I... I... Yeah. The fence creaked again. Tono's forehead was leaning on it. Even if you're shouldering a heavy burden, even if reality is harsh, you have to open your eyes and accept them as they are. I understand. And that's even more so when your family is concerned. Yes. But Tono, you... I rejected her. My mom. I rejected her. Yeah. Because I was afraid. Because I didn't want to go back. I turned my eyes away. I kept clinging on to the dream. Michiru gave her everything in order to keep you away from loneliness. In order to make you smile. She had always been your support. Michiru. Yet. Yet. Yet I... You couldn't do anything, huh? Am I right to say that? Yes. She wasn't able to lift her head. She replied with her head drooping low. I... Her voice was filled with self-derision. I... Am really deplorable. Right. That you are. Michiru will laugh at me. That girl. The night sky was ablaze with a multitude of stars. I told Tono while looking up at them. That girl won't laugh at you. That's not true. Nope, that girl will only weep. <laughs> she hugged the little bottle close to her chest, almost as if she was asking for forgiveness. I'm truly... I'm... deplorable! I can't do it! I can't do it even if I tried! I can't wake from this dream! I can't find the place where I belong! I can't! I can't recover my own wings! I can't! Yeah. Tono squatted down. Star sand, the happiness Michiru prayed for. She squatted down while holding on to it. She was sobbing. But Tono... The girl was hugging her knees as if she were trying to protect her own body. I called out to the girl who was curled up like a newborn baby. The dream is already over, and with that you have nowhere to go. You have no place you belong to. They don't exist anymore. <sighs> Tono's head shot up. Then she slowly turned to look at me. Her moist red eyes looked at me from below. Eyes that were finally open, eyes that had stopped crying. Kunasaki-san? Tears welled up again. Kunasaki-san! Her eyes reflected her thoughts. She looked at me, not averting her gaze even once. Her eyes fervently called out to me. She watched me silently. Our eyes met. Tono squatting down and beat by the rain. Her shoulders were quaking tenderly. Many a time she looked ready to cast her eyes down. Many a time she looked ready to droop her head, yet she didn't. Unease and hope, her eyes were filled with both. And Tono never stopped gazing at me, so I... I gazed down intently at Tono, this girl who was squatting on the wet concrete ground. I took everything about her into my eyes without blinking. I observed her eyes that were asking for, re or for reliance. I opened my mouth, cleared my throat, and told Tono... Don't act like a spoiled child. Eh? Tono cowered. There was hope and fear in her eyes. They slowly clouded over with despair. What are you expecting? I... She looked at the concrete ground, her eyes darting. What were you expecting from me? I... She held her head with her hands. I... She spoke slowly. She looked about ready to scream out. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't wake from your own dream. You have no home, no place to return to. Tona was shaking again. She curled up, grabbing her head, shivering. She wasn't crying. She just quaked continually, as though she had forgotten how to cry. I was. Yet she tried to speak. I was. She creased her eyebrows. 
Tono continued to search for an answer. So? At least. I want to- or I want you to say it yourself. Uh, I won't help anyone who can't even do that. A long silence ensued. Tono had been beaten down. A long time was needed for her to gather the strength in her body. The tip of the ribbon, the sleeves, the water droplets streamed down her cheeks and fell. Finally. I... I... Tono stood up while pinching the bridge of her nose. I... She steadied her shaking feet, her shaky feet. She stood up of her own will. Her swaying hair fell on her shoulders. Are you okay with that? I wanted to confirm with her. Once you say it, there's no going back. I don't mind. Tono shook her head. The water droplets splayed in all directions of, or from her hair. I was certain that her tears were among them. Kunisaki-san. She raised her chin. I looked into Tono's wet eyes. She, uh, she pursed her lips once. She closed her eyes and thought she was... Or thought she were... Or as though she were hesitant. However, that was only for an instant. Tono looked at me earnestly with her frail-looking eyes. Kunisaki-san. She called my name again. The stars behind Tono shone. Please. Please. Fly me into the air. Her hair was set free. Her tears flew behind her, forming a trail of tears. Tono dove into my chest. I hugged her. I hugged her like I'd never let her go. I embraced all of her sadness. I hugged her tightly and firmly. Alright, so that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. That was really hard hitting. And we're not at the end yet, but we're so close! <laughs> But yeah, anyways, so if you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!